Hello, welcome again to WEF on the Web. Welcome to Waverton Evangelical Fellowship's uh, weekly recorded YouTube Sunday service. My name is Robin. Uh, it's my privilege to be the pastor here at WEF, and it's great to be able to welcome you as you join with us in worship through technology. Uh, wherever you're watching, whoever you're watching with, whenever you're watching, uh, we really hope that these videos are continuing to encourage, to challenge, to enable you to worship, to give you calls for reflection and, and to, to help you to engage with God uh, as we still go through uh, what is a, a really difficult time. We've got our usual exciting mix this week of prayer, Bible reading, I'm going to be talking about the Apostle Paul and we're going to be looking at how he dealt with being under, ha under house arrest for two years in Rome. And of course we've got Sunday Club. Uh, I've got to be honest, I've not seen the previews yet, but uh, as with every week, like you I'm sure, I I'm really looking forward to seeing what John gets up to and how he describes Paul's story. Uh, of being under arrest in Rome. Uh, if you are finding these videos useful and helpful, then uh, hit the subscribe button, click on the subscribe button on your, your YouTube channel. Uh, and what it'll do is it will just give you a little notification every time we post a new video. So you'll know when there's something there for you to look at. Uh, what it won't do is steal all your details and sell them to some evil evil supervillain who's trying to take over the world. Well, I don't think it will, anyway. Just to give you a little update on where we are with opening the building, for those of you who are uh, in the vicinity of, uh, of, of the building, uh, because we, we also know and we, and we really appreciate that there are people watching from long, long way away who, even when we do open up fully, uh, probably won't join us in person. Uh, we are going to continue with our online uh, services. We're going to, even when we do eventually get back to a full Sunday service, they will be live streamed and they will be recorded. So for all our uh, our viewers, our, our watchers who are around the world, uh, around the country, uh, this is going to continue. But back to what I was talking about. Where are we in terms of opening the building? Well, life groups have started to meet midweek. Uh, if you don't know what a life group is, it's like a house group, but they don't meet in houses now. They meet in our church building, so we're calling them life groups. And if you're not part of a life group, can I really encourage you to become connected with one? If you're not sure who the life group leaders are, then you can always drop me an email or give me a call and I'll put you in the right direction. But maybe you think, well, they don't meet on a, on a night that I can make or, or at a time that I can make or they're a bit too far away. Uh, what if I want to start a new life group? Well, that's fine. If a few people wanted to start a, a new life group, the idea is to, to meet, to pray, to support, to study the Bible, then again, just give me a call and do everything we can to make that happen for you. But I kind of really encourage you to, to get involved uh, and to become part uh, of a small group. Um, the fellowship, the support, the mutual, prayer and and uh, delving into God's word together can be so beneficial uh, and so helpful for us. We're going to begin our weekly service uh, with uh, I think it's Duncan and family leading us in some sung worship. So let's pray uh, and then let's begin. Heavenly Father thank you. It's, it's another another new week with another set of new opportunities and challenges. Thank you for everything that you've brought us through so far. Thank you that through the difficult times you continue to 
to be with us. We give you this coming week. We ask that our short time of worship now will set us up, set us in the right spiritual place to tackle everything that we're going to deal with in the coming seven days. And we ask that everything we do may somehow reflect your glory. Amen. who was locked in. Now if you or I could be locked in a place of our choice, where would you like to be locked in? Where in the world would you like to be locked in? Well, would you be like to be locked in to a sweet shop? Imagine locked in. Which sweet would you go for? Which packet would you snaffle first? Or maybe locked in a football stadium to watch your favourite team. Which stadium, which scene would you like even? Locked in the cinema to watch the box set of your favourite films. Imagine all the popcorn, all the sweets, all the drinks, and just sat there enjoying episode or film after film. Well, or maybe you would like to be locked into the hairdressers. There's some empty places here. Maybe they've got an appointment for you, and you can sit and have your hair done, have it all done as you like, maybe curled, styled, coloured, whatever you like. Imagine that. Maybe you can't get an appointment, or maybe if you're very young, you might want to be locked into an indoor play area. 
with the slides and the ball pit and all the fun you can have there. Well, if you're hungry, what about locked into a bakery? Oh, those cakes look amazing, don't they? A big slice of that one there, that chocolate cake. Or maybe you'd like a day at the spa. A day at the spa to relax and enjoy life, switch off, forget about all the issues and pressures you have, responsibilities. Oh, who needs those? Enjoy. Well, I guess none of us can be locked in those places. Some of you wouldn't want to be locked in any of them. But today's character, Paul in the Bible, was locked in. He couldn't get out, but he still had a message for his people. He still had a message for the whole world. When Paul arrived in Rome, the Roman authorities locked him into his own home. They made sure two guards guarded his house, so no one could enter and no one could leave. Paul was effectively arrested and locked up in his own home. Now did Paul whinge and moan and get angry? No. We know he spent time writing letters. Many, many letters, long letters. We even call them books because they were so long. And these were to many churches that he'd previously visited, many fellow believers that he wanted to write to, to encourage, to support, to challenge. He wanted to continue his ministry, even though the Romans were determined to stop him. They didn't want this message of love, this message of freedom that Paul was promoting and talking about. There were some Jewish people who heard Paul's message and didn't believe him, didn't believe that Jesus had actually lived, the Messiah had come at all, had questioned everything Paul said. And Paul continually talked about Jesus, his life, his ministry, that he was the way, the truth and the life and no one could come to the Father without Jesus. There were some who believed and received everything that Jesus offered and accepted the message Paul gave. But there were others who challenged it, questioned it, didn't believe it, didn't reckon that Jesus was really the Messiah at all. And for everybody, they had to make a decision whether to trust the words of Paul, the apostle, or not. Paul accepted that. He knew his job was to promote Jesus, would talk about Jesus, to continue his ministry, even though he's locked up. That was his job.
So in our story today, Paul was locked up. And the Romans thought they got it sorted by locking him up and putting two Roman guards on his door. They would stop his impact, his message of love that Jesus was proclaiming, Jesus did by his life. But that wasn't the case because Paul's letters were getting communicated out to all the churches. And then people were coming on certain days to listen to his message. People came from all over to still hear from Paul, from the house he was renting, the house he was locked in. Now some of the people understood clearly, they realised that Jesus was the Messiah, that they need to follow Jesus and not just follow their old ways of, of living, their old rules and following the Jewish customs. They needed to follow Jesus. He was the way, the truth and the life. But there were others who didn't, who didn't, didn't get it. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. They didn't really understand it all. And they went away, not happy, not accepting Paul's message. So it's a choice. Faith is a choice whether we believe or not. And it really is a choice for me and it's a choice for you. It's a choice today. Whatever we decided yesterday, whatever we've done throughout our life, it's about our choice today. Do we trust and follow Christ? And Jesus is the only way, the truth and the life. Here's an illustration about trusting in God, about taking a step of faith. Do we take it or do we not? It's our choice. Enjoy the illustration. Charles Blonding was a tightrope artist, known around the world for his amazing achievements of crossing dangerous places like the Niagara Falls, which was over a thousand feet across. Crowds would gather on the riverbank and cheer as he managed to walk across a wire suspended high above the water. It wasn't always without incident, but one day in the 1860s, as he walked across the Niagara Falls with a wheelbarrow, empty, people were amazed, they cheered, and they thought it was incredible that he could push a wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls. And when he got to the side, he said to the crowd, do you believe I could push somebody inside my wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls? Do you not believe I could do that? And they said, well, of course. And then he looked for a volunteer. He watched and nobody, nobody would will be willing to volunteer to go in Blondie's wheelbarrow until a local preacher from Waverton in England, this minister was willing to go inside Blondin's wheelbarrow. He trusted Blondin and went safely across Niagara Falls. Jesus wants us to trust him with our lives, but we've got to choose, choose to believe him, choose to believe that he has the very best for us and that we are safe wherever we cross and wherever we go.
with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my mind, with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. I will love you, Lord, with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all. So our song today reminds us to love the Lord our God with our hearts, our souls, our minds and our strength. That's what it does. And in our story today, Paul was telling people to love Jesus. So he was telling all the Jewish people, Jesus is the Messiah. He, he, he is the one, the very one who came, who died and then rose again for you and for me. And some of the Jewish people really got it. They understood it. Some of them didn't. That was their choice. And it's the same for us. It's our choice. Just like in our illustration, when Blondie was carrying the wheelbarrow across the Niagara Falls. All the people said, yeah, Blondie, you can do it. We believe you. We trust you. And then he said, well, come on then, get in. <laughs> Who's going to join? Who's going to volunteer to come in my wheelbarrow? And they're like, no, no, you're okay. I don't want to do that. Except one man. One man. That new pastor from Waverton. He was up for it, wasn't he? He was up for getting in the wheelbarrow. He had the faith to believe. And it's our choice today. Boys and girls, parents, families, it's our choice to believe in Jesus, to trust him, to love him with our hearts, our souls, our minds, our strength. Or to say, or to think, or just not to do it at all. It's our choice. It's our choice. So let me pray that we'll make that choice for ourselves. Not follow what everyone else thinks and says and does, but choose for ourselves to trust Jesus, the one who can be totally trusted with our lives. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this amazing story. Thank you that when Paul was locked up, his message went further and further worldwide to all the churches and all the people who heard you through his message. Thank you for all the books, all the Bible he, he wrote. Lord, he was such an important person in our church history. But Lord, for ourselves, we ask that you will help us make choices for you. Make good choices for you, Lord. And above all, just trust you for all the things that we don't know. All the things we're thinking about and we're responsible for, we trust you. Help us. Help us to make those choices today and this week to trust you. Trust you and to trust your love and your faithfulness. Amen. See you next week, boys and girls. See you soon. Bye. Join us this year, boys and girls. Join us, families, for the special Link Up Chester Holiday Club. We've never done it like it before. It's really special. We've got three episodes. The first episode, we're in the desert and we're making prayer aeroplanes. Have a go at making one at home and send us a picture or a video. The second episode, we're in a palace, meeting up with Queen Esther and all the challenges she faced. And the third episode, we're in a prison where we try and break out like Paul and Silas did. And we have a go at building a special ball challenge at home. Send us your pictures and videos on the link on the, on the email. We'll send it out as well. So if you need to know more details, get in touch. You should already have the links to those amazing Holy Club videos. Enjoy. Have a great summer.
Let's spend some time in prayer. Lord Jesus, I come to you today and thank you for the privilege of praying for others. I've been the recipient of others' prayers so often. I understand how powerful prayer for others can be. I ask you first to cleanse my heart and show me if there is anything in my own life which is creating a barrier between us so that my prayers for others will not be hindered. I thank you that through your name I can come boldly before you and pray with confidence according to your will and know that you hear me. I lift up those in my community, in my city and in my church. Begin with those who follow you and help them influence others for good. Let them be salt and light, pointing others to the good news of Jesus. Deepen their love for you and for the people around them. Guard them from insincerity or from giving in to temptations that could harm the cause of Christ. Raise up leaders who will serve you faithfully at all costs. Turn the hearts of parents towards their children and families toward you. Help them to shamelessly display your values and truths in their lives and make them bold in their faith. Strengthen my own family and those closest to me, Lord. May our love for you help us to love and forgive others and make a difference in our world. I pray for all those in authority and leadership, both locally and throughout the world. Give them your mind and surround them with godly counsellors who will exercise integrity and work for justice, morality and freedom. Help them to look to you, not dismiss you. I pray for your people who are in positions of influence and authority. May their faith and trust in you give them the boldness to stand up for what is honest and true and challenge those who would seek to use privilege and power for their own ends. Let there be confession when we have wronged others and ignored your commandment to love our neighbour. Bring a spirit of peace, reconciliation and forgiveness to our troubled world. I pray for the lost, the hurting, the lonely, the sick, the bereaved and those who are imprisoned behind both visible and invisible walls. Send your comfort and peace and your calming presence to those who are without hope. You know the names of those close to, to us who are sick or suffering in any way and we bring those to you now. Protect the defenceless and hold them close to your heart. Jesus, our hearts cry out for persecuted believers too. Make them brave and give them your powerful protection. I pray you will bring swift justice to those who want to destroy the innocent and those who carry your name. Let us join together in the words Jesus gave his disciples as a pattern for prayer. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.
Three days later, he called together the local Jewish leaders. When, he, when they had assembled, Paul said to them, My brothers, although I have done nothing against our people or against the customs of our ancestors, I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. They examined me and wanted to release me. Because I was not guilty of any crime deserving death, the Jews objected, so I was compelled to make an appeal to Caesar. I certainly did not intend to bring any charge against my own people. For this reason, I have asked to see you and talk with you. It's because the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have not received any letters from Judea concerning you, and none of our people who have come from there has reported or said anything bad about you. But we want to hear what your views are, for we know that people everywhere are talking against this sect. They arranged to meet Paul on a certain day and came in even larger numbers to the place where he was staying. He witnessed to them from morning till evening, explaining about the kingdom of God and the law of Moses and from the prophets. He tried to persuade them about Jesus. Some were convinced by what he said, but others would not believe. They disagreed among themselves and began to leave after Paul had made the, his final statement. The Holy Spirit spoke the truth to your ancestors when he, when he through Isaiah the prophet, go to the, go to this people and say, you will be ever hearing, uh, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart became calloused. They hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and in turn, I would heal them. Therefore, I want you to know that God's salvation has been sent to the Gentiles and they will listen. For two whole years, Paul stayed there in his own rented house and welcomed all who came to him. He proclaimed to the kingdom of God and taught the Lord about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without a hindrance. If you feel as though you've been under house arrest for the last few months, then you'll probably identify with uh, this week's Bible person that we're looking at who's uh, dealing with the state of lockdown it's Paul and he's been under house arrest or he is under house arrest in Rome and he's there for for about two years and we're gonna have a look today at uh, the circumstances ar around his situation and how he responds to it and how in spite of it he continues to preach the gospel and what does that mean for us so let's let's look a little bit at, at, at the story uh, we've heard from uh, Acts 28 and we're going to remember that Luke is not writing a biography of Paul he's he's writing an account of the early church and this is where uh, the story of Paul fits into the account of the early church uh, Paul's story doesn't finish with Luke's account here um, we know that Paul is released he's uh, arrested uh, at least twice and um, he does eventually uh, get brought to trial uh, and he's he's martyred he's executed because of his faith um, but that's not where we are in in his life story Luke doesn't cover that we piece that together from from historical accounts uh, other biblical accounts and from from Paul's letters so where are we well uh, Paul's he's not even in his own house he's in a, a a rented house and he's under guard so he can't leave but what he can do is to have visitors It's not going particularly well because Paul ha has to uh, appeal to Caesar uh, for his life ironically you see the uh, the Jews were viewing uh, Christianity with a, a, a great deal of, of suspicion and contempt the there were a, a significant number of Jews who were leaving uh, the Jewish faith to convert to Christianity and so 
they treated the people the main exponents of, of the gospel so paul peter uh, silas barnabas people like that you can read about most of them if you read the the book of acts they were treating those with with suspicion and they wanted to get rid of them they wanted to stop them and uh, and so um it's the local jewish leaders who paul starts talking to uh, he he's in a difficult situation he's a jew but fortunately he's also a, a roman citizen uh, and there was this concerted plot by the jews to put paul to death they insisted that they should try him put him to trial because he was jewish and um, the way he got out of that was he appealed to caesar as we read what luke writes uh, verse 19 um, paul says i felt it necessary to appeal to caesar even though i had no desire to press charges against my own people uh, even though these people were trying to execute him they were trying to have him done away with paul still bears no malice towards them you see he doesn't really want to start a legal dispute uh, with the jewish church but he has to do something because otherwise they're going to take his life and so he as a, a citizen of rome he appeals to caesar now the roman authorities are, are, are sort of putting him in in i suppose a, a parallel would be he's, he's in remand they're they're in no hurry to bring his case to trial <coughs> probably because they they understand that there's no case to answer to and we're not told this but i get the impression that to keep the the jewish leaders happy they're putting paul under house arrest they could quite easily have thrown him into prison um, but they didn't uh, and and the although they've taken away his freedom of of going outside and and of preaching in the temple and preaching in the open spaces which is uh, what got him uh, arrested uh, a couple of times as, as we read the earlier chapters of acts they're not taking away uh, the freedom for people to go and visit him so they're i suppose they're doing uh the, they're being seen to to take the the complaints from the jewish leaders seriously um while affording paul as much leniency as, as they can that's that's how i'm reading this um so there he is he, he's under house arrest um and the there's a group of jewish leaders uh, who have come to hear uh, what paul believes now uh, verse 21 tells us that these jewish leaders have had no letters from judea or reports against you from anyone who has come here paul's beaten the mail don't forget in in those days um written reports um letters would have taken a, a long time to reach their recipients uh and and so that's why i think that the luke writes that these jewish leaders have had no reports against paul i'm sure they were on the way but paul beat them to it he arrived before uh, the the mail uh, and what does he do how does he deal with these jewish leaders who have come to see him in house arrest well he, he challenges their their consciences he starts to preach to them uh, luke writes from the law of moses and from the prophets and he tries to persuade them about jesus don't forget that that uh, uh, their bible was 
the equivalent of our Old Testament now. They didn't have the New Testament. It was still being written. Uh, in fact, as we find, uh, we will find out in, in a bit, Paul writes a, a significant part of it whilst he's under a house arrest there. So all they had was the Old Testament. And this is more evidence, this is more um, encouragement that as we read the Old Testament, we can't help but see Jesus in it. See, we can, we can now read Old Testament prophecies uh, and we can, we can see how they point directly uh, to Jesus, to his birth, uh, to his ministry, uh, to his, his death, to his resurrection. The, there's so many um, commentators disagree about the exact number, but it, it's, it, it's 300, 400 Old Testament prophecies that relate directly to Jesus and that he fulfilled in, in his three-year ministry. So Paul's using their own writing, their own scriptures, uh, their own Bible, to try and persuade them uh, about Jesus. Uh, and Luke writes that some of them were convinced, but others still wouldn't believe. Uh, and he gets quite pointed uh, because verse 25 tells us that after they'd argued back and forth among themselves they left with this final word from Paul ringing in their ears he had the, the parting shot here the Holy Spirit was right he says when he said to your ancestors through Isaiah uh, and then there's three a couple of verses where he quotes from from Isaiah uh, that talks about their, their, their uh, hearts being hardened and their ears being closed so that they just aren't in that state to receive uh, and to respond to the gospel he's not mincing his words here he's not he's, he's being quite uh, forthright uh, and quite forceful in the way that he's talking to these people um, we get the picture that he hasn't just hit them with the gospel and sat back and folded his arms this has been a, a lengthy discussion uh, a deep theological discussion between Paul and between the Jewish leaders don't forget that, that these are, are not just ordinary uh, followers of the of the Jewish religion these are people who would have known the scriptures known them well uh, just like Paul did uh, don't forget Paul was a was a, a Pharisee. Paul was was learned in the uh, in the scriptures, so he would have been able to debate with them and argue with them uh, at, at, a, at, a, at quite some depth. Uh, and then he leaves them with this quite scathing quote from Isaiah. He's saying this applies to you. When Isaiah is talking about people with hardened hearts and people with with uh, ears that can't hear and eyes that are closed he's talking to you and I don't know about you but there's times when certainly I've come across people like that that no matter how much you explain no matter how much you you reason no matter how much you talk to them about Jesus uh, and about the kingdom that they just don't want to hear it's as if they've come uh, not prepared to to listen to anything you you want to say uh, and these unteachable people uh, sadly you, you you and I will, will never win with them um, if they're going to respond to the gospel then it's going to be because of a, um, a a working of the Holy Spirit it's going to take a, a miracle for them to hear and and respond and sometimes it's like that and it, it can be really discouraging that you can try your best you can you can talk you can reason you can debate you can give it your best uh, argument and still people just don't want to know 
they, they just reject it outright and it's very easy for us to become discouraged when that happens so I want to say to you don't become discouraged when that happens that happened to Paul here we read about it and so if that can happen to this guy who wrote uh, the majority of the New Testament then that can certainly happen to us if that can happen to to the person who set out some key elements of Christian doctrine and theology then that can certainly happen to us so the next time you're talking to somebody you're sharing your faith with somebody and they don't respond then, then my message is please don't think that it's an inadequacy in you uh, a lack of your faith uh, a, a lack of of understanding or knowledge of the scriptures a lack of of depth of of bible teaching some people we know from from scripture we read it here verse 26 27 that their hearts are hardened their ears are deafened their eyes are are closed and for them it's going to take a a, a miracle of the holy spirit uh, before they respond to the gospel but what does he do uh, as a result of this does he does he give up does he does he um does he go oh well you know that's that then he, he doesn't he continues to preach with confidence and again it's so easy when we have a knockback when we when we have a rejection uh, when we have criticism uh, and and it's a, an understandable human response that we just want to retract uh, and and withdraw and and give up uh, and to be honest there's nothing that that the enemy there's nothing that satan wants more than for us to respond like that than to make us feel that we're not good enough not clever enough not articulate enough not understanding enough we could we could go on and on and on and there's nothing that is further from the truth see paul's response to this huge knockback was to preach with boldness and to preach with confidence because Luke tells us that he proclaimed the kingdom of God talked about the taught uh, uh, well he talked as well uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ for the next two years he said he welcomed all who visited him boldly proclaiming the kingdom of God and no one tried to stop him the, the Jewish leaders had obviously realized that with with Paul being under the um, almost under the protection of Rome um, you, you get the sense well I do that that he's been he's under house arrest partly for his own protection uh, partly because the the Roman authorities I don't think wanted a, a repeat of the situation that happened with Jesus uh, and so they were avoiding that uh, at all costs they at, at this point um, they did want another Christian martyr on their hands and so Luke tells us in his final sentence of Acts that no one tried to stop Paul from preaching the kingdom of God but he didn't just do that as if that that wasn't enough uh, he also wrote letters to the Ephesians the Philippians the Colossians and, and the letter to Philemon all while he was under house arrest so even though he didn't have the the freedom to go out and preach in the street and preach in the, the synagogues God was still using him in the most incredible ways I'm sure that he had no idea that as he was writing these letters that 2,000 years later 
we would be sitting around and uh, looking at them and discussing them and analyzing them and taking encouragement from them and receiving challenge from them and and using them to to build up our faith and and shape our our belief uh, i really don't think he had any any idea that that god was going to use him in such an incredibly powerful way he did what was natural to him he did what he couldn't not do and that was proclaim the kingdom and teach about jesus and our challenge from from reading this this little account uh of of paul and the lockup is how are we gonna do are we gonna proclaim the kingdom because that call is on each and every one of us who call ourselves christians each and every one of us who said yes to jesus invitation when he says follow me our calling is to proclaim the kingdom now you don't have to be a preacher in terms of of a an orator a presenter you don't have to stand up in front of a congregation you don't you don't have to stand up on a on a on a street corner and and shout the gospel out but like i said last week if god calls you to do that then embrace it and respond to that call but for the majority of us we're not called to do that but we are called to proclaim the kingdom and we have to make a response to that for paul preaching the gospel came with the risk of death and we know that ultimately that's the price that he paid for his obedience to his lord now we're so uh, thankful that in this country we have the freedom to uh, proclaim the kingdom and teach about Jesus uh, almost anywhere to whomever we like we can stand on a street corner we're welcomed in the vast majority of schools we can hold community events and we can quite openly proclaim Jesus uh, but we're so blessed in, in in our fellowship in, in WEF to have Peter Asherton who carries this burden for the persecuted church and, and he calls us regularly to pray for, for our Christian brothers and sisters who are uh, living in countries where even to to meet together carries the risk of imprisonment and torture and death let alone uh, preaching the gospel uh, and, and Peter continues to to remind us sometimes with with names and faces uh, of Christian Christian brothers and sisters who have suffered and who are suffering because they continue to carry the name of Jesus we don't have those restrictions and yet so often we don't take advantage of them we don't make the most of them are we going to proclaim the kingdom we all have an opportunity to proclaim the kingdom how are we going to respond to that see paul had no church in terms of a group of people behind him supporting him encouraging him enabling him he had no building there was nowhere to invite people to he was in a, a, a hired a rented house uh, under roman soldier guard he had no resources he had, he, 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 he couldn't um do the things that that we do in in the the western 21st century society the fact that you're watching this now the fact that this message is is going out to 
even with our own little church even the, the, this message is going out to to hundreds of people Paul didn't have that he was chained up under Roman guard but he still Luke tells us preached with all boldness and without hindrance nobody tried to stop him I think that's the challenge for us um, we're still living in strange times uh, we're still not able to to meet on a Sunday in a way that that resembles uh, the the sort of church service that we're used to we, we wouldn't be allowed to to sing we're not not allowed to um, to have children's groups um, we wouldn't be allowed to to share Holy Communion in the same way that that we were doing it it, it would just be be unrecognizable but we're starting to to meet together we're, we're having life groups meet within the building and enabling that to take place and we we thank God for those resources and we thank God for the 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 technological resources that we have which means that we can we can do a, a an online holiday club and still proclaim the kingdom and still teach children about Jesus we thank God for for the way that that this message and and kids club is going into to dozens and, and dozens uh, of, of homes well no hundreds of, of homes because we're still getting over a hundred views every Sunday uh, of these these video services Paul didn't have any of those but he still preached with all boldness the challenge for us to me as much as as anyone is are we going to do the best we can with what we've got and we've got an awful lot more than Paul had in this account that we read how are we going to use what God has given us to preach to proclaim the kingdom with all boldness and without hindrance that's the challenge you don't have to be a preacher you don't have to be uh, 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 I've explained it all you have to be able to do is to share your story of how Jesus has changed your life that's all you have to be able to do my prayer my challenge Luke's challenge to us from this passage is that we will do that with all boldness and without hindrance Amen I want to give you an opportunity uh, as with every week to respond to the passage of scripture that we've been looking at to respond to what you 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 may feel God is saying to you as, as we looked at that as we looked at Paul and how he responded to being under house arrest for two years and there's two ways in which I think we need to respond one is if you would call yourself a Christian if you're following Jesus now it doesn't matter whether that faith journey began a week ago or 50 years ago the the onus on us the purpose that God has for us above and beyond everything else is to point people towards his kingdom is to share the good news of Jesus with those who don't yet know him with those who don't yet know him as Savior and Lord and in the midst of lockdown we can still do that with the people that we have contact with over the phone or, or family or our social bubbles or the people that deliver parcels uh, that we've bought stuff online or maybe health appointments that we go to but maybe you you thinking well I don't see anybody I'm shielding uh, um, I, I really 
I'm avoiding all sorts of social contact uh, for, for some very good reasons uh, and that's fine then can I encourage you maybe I don't need to encourage you to pray for the people that you would love to see drawn into the kingdom the people you would love to see become Christians before lockdown we started looking at uh, what Graham uh, launched which was our one to win campaign and it was quite simple one person that we want to see give their life to Jesus that hasn't gone away our activities have changed and we've got very busy in different ways but the one to win is still very much there and as we gradually come out of lockdown we'll be looking at ways in which we can we can put this into into practice but for now can I encourage you to continue to pray or if you haven't started to start to pray for your one to win for the person that God has placed on your heart to become a Christian so that's the first response the second response as as I do every week and, I, and I'll make no apologies for this is that if you haven't begun your journey of faith if you haven't said yes to that invitation that Jesus gives very simple invitation follow me if you haven't begun that then my invitation my challenge my uh, opportunity to respond to you is this uh, maybe you want to do it today maybe you want some questions answered uh, and that's fine we all have questions that we need answering and if you get in touch with us then uh, through the website is probably the best way uh, the emails come to me and we will do our very I say we I'm, I'm talking on behalf of the church leadership now myself and, and council uh, and we will do our very very best to help you to find the answers to those questions that you have but maybe you want to do it today maybe you, you you're thinking yeah I, I'm, I'm I, I can't put this off anymore I can't ignore this anymore so let me guide you through how you can do it it's not difficult to begin that faith journey and it begins with a prayer that goes something like this and it doesn't have to be word for word but it goes something like Lord Jesus I, I thank you that on the cross you died to take the punishment that should have been mine for the things that I've done in my life that have put barriers between me and God the things that the Bible calls sin there might have been things that I've done intentionally or things that I've done without realizing it and I'm sorry for those things but because you died in my place I can receive your forgiveness because you rose again from the dead you can stand in front of God and plead my case for me thank you Jesus I want to be known as one of your disciples I want to be known as a follower of Jesus from this moment onwards and I want to give my life over to doing that to the best of my ability I also recognize that there's times when I'm gonna fail there's times when I'm gonna mess up and I thank you that your forgiveness is always there for me whenever that happens if you prayed a prayer something like that or if you want to find out more or if you want someone to pray with you or talk with you then please do get in touch with us uh, it's an incredible journey this this 
journey of faith with Jesus uh, and it starts with one small step let me pray for us all and then Tony and Eileen are going to close our, our act of worship today uh, with a song Heavenly Father we want our lives uh, to be given over to you we don't want the things uh, of of the world to to restrict and distract us and in the same way as the Apostle Paul couldn't help but preach the gospel while he was locked up restricted to a house in Rome so we want to preach the gospel we want to tell people about the good news of Jesus even though we might be restricted to our own homes give us the courage give us the boldness to be able to do that because we want to see those who are lost those who aren't yet Christians come to a uh, a living knowledge of Jesus and experience the promise that Jesus gave that he came to bring life and life in all its fullness Amen